Have you got balls? Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, my new balls. I like you. You have balls. I like balls. <laughs> I'm going to do a sort of a review of the Eleanor 9.6, but really, I'm talking about these original whiskey balls. All right, so a little bit about Eleanor. In case you don't know, there is this channel, you may have heard about it, uh, called the Whiskey Vault. And there is the Whiskey Tribe, and there is a distillery that was founded by all the contributors uh, called the uh, Crowded Barrel. And they have a tasting room called Fang and Feather. Richard Amiro, my good friend Richard Amiro, if you ever visit the distillery, you might meet up with him and he'll serve you a cocktail or pour you a glass of uh, perhaps one of the latest bottles of Eleanor. Now, uh, in my previous visit, about a year ago, actually in April 2019, I visited the distillery, met up with Daniel and Rex, and I later did a review of the 6.2, did a review of the 6.2, and uh, talked a little bit about uh, the Whiskey Tribe, is it a cult, and all that kind of a thing. Uh, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this. This one was aged in 44 months. It's uh, at 114.6 proof, or 57.3% alcohol by volume. So I was recently in Texas again and took a couple classes at the Wizard Academy. And while I was there, I picked up this bottle. This is the Eleanor 9.6. So it's a little bit lighter. It doesn't have, uh, it has the age statement on the side of it. Excuse me. It has the label on the side of it for, uh, and it tells you that it's, you know, 116.9 uh, proof or 58.45% alcohol by volume that it's a 9.6, chapter 9.6, and this is bottle number 59. But it doesn't tell you an age statement. If you look at the color, and it's, I know it's gonna be hard on camera, but the one on my left, the 6.2, is a little bit darker than the 9.6. I was told in the tasting room that uh, the 9.6 and a couple of other bottles they had there are uh, were really produced uh, to uh, pour it in the tasting room, whether it's neat or um, to make cocktails with it. So if you visit uh, the tasting room, the Fang and Feather, Richard, or whoever is serving at the time, and it can pour you a cocktail. They also have another special bottle, which began with the Texas Whiskey Marathon. These are called the Alliance Series. And basically these are blended whiskeys from Texas distilleries. This one is actually from the Treaty Oak Distillery. When I was there, they had one from Balcones. I did a previous one. It was a, a blend from three uh, other different uh, Texas distilleries. So pretty, really cool. Again, these are short supply. They come and they go. And w w if you visit there, you may have a completely different bottle or available from the Alliance series. But they're probably actually uh, producing more blended Texas um, whiskeys than anybody else and producing more independent bottles of Texas distilleries there but they're in these nice little handy mini bottles. So when I visit the distillery, visited the tasting room there, Richard he'll either pour me something neat, uh, something new, one of the new releases or he'll make me one of their cocktails and one of the things I really liked about the cocktails is they have these ice balls. So I wanted to get some for myself uh, and try these molds out, see how well they work. When you take the mold out of the freezer, first, of course, they have a little hole on top, so you wanna pour water in there and then put them in the freezer, probably for at least five hours. I just let them sit there overnight. And then when you take them out to get them loose, you can let them sit on your countertop just, you know, maybe 10 minutes or something like that, then become a little more loose up. Or if you just press really, really hard, they'll pop out like this, I'm, but I want to do this without breaking it. Sometimes if you just plop it into the glass, it'll shatter. But what I've been really challenged with is, if you, I don't know if you can see that, there's like this funny, it looks like a nipple right there, and it looks like there's a ring around it, kind of like the ring of Saturn. It's trying to figure out how much water to put in there, because in case you don't know this, you put water expands when it freezes. So it's hard to figure out what percentage do you put in there? If you go all the way to the top 
it to, there's a little hole on top. What happens is, is it spills out as it freezes, and then you have you know frozen ice all over the top. It also squeezes out in between the bottom half and the lower half, and then when you pull it apart, it just doesn't look all that nice and neat. It doesn't look like the photo on the advertisement, but somehow uh, the geniuses there at uh, the Fang and Feather have figured out how to do it so that you get a nice smooth bottle. It may be they remove it from the, and this is a guess, they remove from the mold and then smooth them out. So if you're doing these, you're gonna have party guests, you could remove them all ahead of time before your guests show up. And you, by the way, you can get these in the molds of uh, not just you know one at a time, you can have like six at a time. So it could be that they remove them. Actually, this part here is flat. Remo they remove them and then be nice and smooth like this. And then it would sit nice and flat in a glass just like that. That's probably the best way to do it. Leave a little space on the top, you know, where, where the hole is on the top, and let that be the bottom, and then set that end flat in the glass. So it'll be nice and smooth on top, because as we know, you want your balls to be smooth, and then you can just serve it like that. And it actually looks pr pretty cool like that. Now, I know what people are gonna say, I know what people are gonna say about putting your whiskey on ice. They will say, oh, you drink your whiskey any way you want, but if you put your whiskey on ice, it's gonna diminish in flavor, yada, 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 yada. Well, I already did a whole video on the issue of putting whiskey on, on ice. Here's the thing, one, if it's 106 degrees, right, as it gets to be here uh, in the Central Valley or on the east side of California, although we don't have the humidity of Texas, thank God, um, you're either going to go without whiskey or you're going to want to cool it down, all right? So there's your choice. Me, I like bourbons on ice. I'm not as big uh, with, say, Scotch whiskeys, Irish whiskeys, definitely not Japanese whiskeys on ice. I think Japanese are, are too delicate. But I like a bourbon on ice. Or, in this case, because this isn't New Oak, technically, legally, it's not a bourbon. It's not labeled as a bourbon. Uh, but they didn't use New Oak. But in terms of the flavor profiles of corn, caramels, cinnamon, vanilla, maybe a little bit of nutmeg, um, toffee, and all that. You know, your standard bourbon notes, it's got all the flavors and aromas of a bourbon. Now, what I find, mm, 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 mm. what I find is, if you choose a real high proof bourbon, or uh, bourbon mash whiskey, however you want to do it. And then you put it on ice. Because the ABV is so high, it'll easily take a little cooling without losing a ton of flavor. It is jam-packed with flavor. Number two, it's going to be a lot more um, refreshing. It's a lot more um, enjoyable in the heat. Now, while some of the fruit characteristics, maybe, you know, that, that's maybe the apple notes and the peach cobbler notes, and those will kind of back off. I find if you cool them down, you still maintain a lot of the uh, tertiary notes, the, that which comes from aging, that which has been extracted from the cast, the vanilla, the cinnamon, and the caramels. All that is still there, even though you may be reducing a little bit on the, uh, the peach and apple and that kind of characteristics. So, some of them particularly if they don't filter and they still maintain a lot of the oils and all that, it actually comes across as sort of like a melted French vanilla ice cream. Mm. The butterscotch. And it still has, a, seriously, still has a little bit of tick. Okay. Even if the ice begins to melt, this is not, you know, your 80 proof, 40% alcohol by volume whiskey. It's not even 45, it's not even 50. This is real high proof. So even if the, the, the ice were to melt, completely melt, now what I would have is a really cold, high ABV. It would still be, maybe drop down to 45, maybe 50, whatever else. It still has tons of flavor and it's still an absolutely delicious drink. Now, would I review a whiskey on ice? You know, 
base my judgment of a whiskey on ice? No, of course not. Of course not. I'm talking about how you enjoy a whiskey. Enjoy a high proof bourbon or high proof uh, corn mash whiskey. I'm not talking about, you know, um, reviewing it, right? So I wouldn't give this a score or anything like that based on like this, but I'm going to say I really, really like it. And, and, and once you stick them in there, it looks cool. You know, if you're having guests over and you're having a party, it's, I know during the COVID times, it's a little challenging, uh, but I just find I really, really like this. I like the rocks glass. This is a Riedel uh, rocks glass. This is called the spade glass. I like the diamond cut that they have on the glass. I like the weight of the glass. I like the heaviness of the glass. This is all about enjoying the whiskey, kicking back, watching the movie, hanging out on the porch, perhaps smoking a cigar, hanging out with a bunch of the guys on the deck, you know, keep your social distancing and all that kind of stuff, you know, that, and just enjoying a, a really nice, sweet, caramel, vanilla, uh, butterscotch, cinnamon, and baking spice, uh, essentially well, becoming a cocktail at this point. I, I really, really like this. So, all right, so if you um, are ever in Texas and you're in the Austin area, I want to highly recommend checking out the Crowded Barrel Distillery. If you see Richard, tell him I said hello. Uh, try one of the cocktails. I think they're actually fantastic. They do a really, really uh, great job of it. And um, if you enjoy your whiskeys in the summer on ice, let me know. If you say, no, 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 I don't care. If it's 115 degrees with 100% humidity, I'm still going to drink it neat. You can drink it how you want. But if you also uh, enjoy me and enjoying a, a nice, cold, uh, creamy, because the, the texture actually gets kind of creamy, uh, right? If you if they still have the oils, if they don't do a lot of filtering, that and a lot of spice and vanilla, and you, you enjoy this like I do, then let me know down below, all right? And if you don't, and if you live somewhere, say like, you know, in Scotland, where it can be like 51 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Fahrenheit, or smack dab in the middle of summer and pouring down rain. I know, uh, July uh, 2019, I, I was up at uh, Old Pulteney Distillery in the middle of July. This is Eric Wait, and I'm at Old Pulteney Distillery in July. It is cold, it is raining, it is windy. Welcome to fucking Scotland in summer. It was 40 degrees Fahrenheit and pouring down rain. Well, if that's the kind of weather you live in, you know, in the middle of summer, well, and I can see why you wouldn't want to put your whiskey on ice. But uh, for us here in sunny California, I'm going to drink it on ice. All right. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you're one of my patrons, I want to thank you very much for joining my little group. And uh, until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.